The name of the company that makes this car is almost a palindrome for a toy yacht. Turn it the other way around and you've got a Toyota. We'll start with the good news. This is the top of the range CDX two litre estate. Now normally estates, I think, are really ugly. They're sort of saloons with a box tacked on the back. But this one is gorgeous in comparison to most of its rivals, which is a surprise because it's been designed by a Toyota Pan-European committee. Now normally, as we know, committees give us camels, but not in this case. Look at this beautifully sculpted bonnet here, smoking windows and a backside that's positively pert with these beautiful wrap round large lamps that make the estate version of the Avensis look like it was properly designed from scratch. Very attractive, full mark so far. Unfortunately, exhausted by their excellent efforts outside, this talented design team obviously took a break whilst Steve Boring Davis designed the interior. Look at this, acres of dark grey plastic, last seen on John Major's spitting image puppet. Create an atmosphere with all the appeal of a wet winter's sky over Skegness. And look, hard grey leather seats add to the atmosphere of despondence. And those sassy smoking windows on the outside just add to the gloom on the inside. However, I believe that other interior colours are available. The Avensis is now amongst us so that the boring old Carina E no longer needs to be. It's being phased out this year. Meanwhile, Toyota have high hopes indeed for their new Rose. It's aimed at the upper-medium sector of the market, wants to be a big player on the fleet buyers list, and is supposed to appeal strongly to young families as well. The engines have been reworked to be more responsive than the Carina E. They vary from a 1.6-litre 16-valve lean burn through a 1.8 version to 2 litres. There's also a 2-litre turbo diesel engine with electronic fuel injection, drive-by-wire throttle and an intercooler. I wish they'd sent me that one to try. Acceleration has been improved at lower engine speeds in the Avensis, and there's roughly 3% better fuel efficiency over all of the four new models. Meanwhile, back in the driver's seat... It's a perfectly pleasant and easy car to drive. The seats are very comfortable, they wrap round you extremely snugly, and unlike in a lot of cars, the headrests actually come forward and rest your head. And one thing I particularly like is the view through the large rear quarter windows. Now the cheapest version of the Avensis is the S-Grade, but even that comes pretty loaded with things like powered front windows and mirrors, adjustable steering column remote, central locking and an immobiliser. Now this is the top of the range, as I said earlier, so this one comes with a rather nice electric sunroof. It also has wood trim that clashes horribly with all the grey plastic. An extremely attractive CD tape and radio, along with a truly awful audio remote control. I mean, look at this little stubby thing down here. You need the dexterity of a magician to fumble your way around here to find anything useful. And then why bother? Because the remote controls are so handily situated near the actual controls. You know me, I like a gadget, but only if they're actually useful. In the bad old days, it was how fast a car could go and how quickly it could get you there that sold cars. Today, it's how many mod cons come as standard, and of course, how safe is my family going to be? Well, the Avensis does pretty well in these departments. Toyota claims that this has the best safety features in its class. Driver and passenger airbags, of course. Front seat side airbags are standard too. What's more, the front airbags are larger than in the Carina. Anti-lock brakes are standard, better seat belt mechanisms, and reinforced rear seat backs to stop flying luggage becoming a pain in the back. All good stuff. Talking of luggage, I've decided to stop here to show you how flexible things are in the back. Oh, and by the way, these luggage rails are standard on the CDX. 
For a start, there's a deceptively large amount of space in the back here, and that's because it's opened out at the sides behind the rear wheel arches to give extra width. There are clasps in here to batten your luggage down, and this is rather neat too. Simple cover to hide your valuables that clips in the back, and that's also very easy to remove. A couple of levers there, and the whole thing, very light, just lifts out. And that's also true of this fabric luggage guard here. That simply unclasps too. Meanwhile, in the back seats, lots of space, good leg room down here because the front seats have been sculpted out to give you extra room for your knees. And there's great flexibility here too. Basically, these seats can be very simply pushed down. Oh, hello. And then the back seat just pops forward like that and the headrest comes out. Extra flexibility, extra length there, and the same on the other side. But before I show you that, there's a nice piece of storage space there. Put your drinks, a little few nibbles there. But otherwise, this seat does just the same. Clips, forward it goes. You take the backrest off, and then you've got acres of space. Rather clever. Overall, I like the design of this estate car, but it's not going to light any fires in the motoring world. It's a good machine, but its performance is as dull as the interior planes of plastic. The Avenza 2.0-litre CDX estate does 0-60 to in about 10 seconds, has a top speed of 125 miles an hour and an average fuel consumption of 33 mpg, and it costs just under £20,000. The bottom of the range S grade starts at 14,000. Now Toyota compares prices and specs with rivals like the Vectra, the Mondeo and the Peugeot 406 and the Avensis comes out on top quite easily. However, at the time I was road testing, the Avensis was in a higher insurance class than the others because Toyota hadn't got round to sending the assessors a car to assess. Now that's one drawback I'm sure they'll remedy straight away.